Let's take a handful of parts and a couple of Arduino modules and see if we can throw them together in a single project demonstration. I recently looked at this PWM generator XY PWM1, which was sent to me for review by IC Station. This allows us to generate a pulse output between 1 hertz and 150 kilohertz with PWM controls so we can change the duty cycle of that output. So you give this module a power supply with V plus and minus, then your main signal output is PWM and ground is common with the input V minus. And I noticed inside there's this unpopulated header which has TX, RX, and ground to allow UART control of this module's functions. So I thought it would be interesting to use an Arduino to talk to this and be able to control its output and create a larger system out of this. If we scroll down on this page, here's the UART control commands, and we can do these things including turning on and off the actual PWM output and changing the frequency or the duty cycle. Hey, I recognize those pictures. My original product review video is on this product page now. That's neat. Here's what I had in mind for a little demo setup. We would usually want to automate and control a unit like this in a functional test environment so I put this hypothetical system in place to test DC motors. So from a high level view of this setup, I'll be using a node MCU that will control this PWM module, which controls PWM on this motor. And the INA219 current monitor is going to monitor how much current this motor system is using. The ESP8266 will check if we have sufficient current to consider this a working motor and decide if the functional test has passed or failed, print out a status on the OLED, and use these LEDs for pass-fail indicators. And there's a little push button here to start each test. The testing flowchart may look a little like this, so we start by pushing the button, and I want to check the motor at low speed and high speed, so that will tell me if the motor's running and if it's able to change, it's not just stuck in one mode. So when we press the button to start the test, we turn on the PWM generator with a low duty cycle to run the motor at low speed, give it a couple of seconds to get up to speed, measure the current with the INA219. Is the current measured at least a certain minimum to guarantee the motor is running? If not, something's wrong, so just fail the test and we're done. If it is running at low speed with a correct amount of current, set the PWM generator for high speed, let it get up to speed for a couple of seconds, measure the current. Did we measure at least a certain minimum to guarantee proper operation at high speed? If not, that we're done, the test failed. If so, the test has passed and we're done testing. So looking more closely at this, the main power source will be USB 5 volts from this Node MCU module that comes out into the power rails down here. That powers the OLED and the INA219 sensor, and it also powers the PWM generator. The INA219 and the OLED are both I squared C, so we have serial clock and data on this upper bus being controlled by Node MCU, and there's pull up resistors on the INA219 for correct I squared C operation. These three GPIO right here are the push button and two status LEDs for pass fail and to communicate at 9600 on the serial port between node MCU and the receive in on the PWM module, we're using this pin here, which is a secondary serial port on the ESP8266. I was having trouble getting it to cooperate on the main one, probably because it's connected up to USB, and when the PWM generator is turned on, the PWM output goes up to this L 9110 motor driver. I'm not using this ground output because it's the same as the V minus anyway and everything has a common ground on here. I'm using a different power supply for this whole motor circuit because when I tried to use the main 5 volts it was causing glitches on the I squared C, the screen was jumping all over the place. I have this external supply, I'm actually using a separate Arduino just to give 5 volts here. So plus and minus of this extra power supply go to the plus and minus power inputs on the motor driver. 
but the high side of this power source is going through the current monitor before it goes to this driver. That way I can measure the current drawn by this entire module, which will include the motor itself and some amount of current for this board. I just found it easier this way. Originally I was trying to put the current monitor in line with the high side output on this motor itself, but doing it this way smooths out the result because this is turning on and off with the PWM generator, so the current is going to be fluctuating up and down, and measuring the entire current is just a little easier. It gave better measurements. And there's two control inputs for the motor, so one is tied to ground, and the other gets turned on and off with the PWM generator to control the motor speed. So with this being a separate power source up here, because we have a control signal coming from this system, we need a common ground, so we have that right here. And now we push the button, Node MCU turns on the PWM generator, the motor runs, Node MCU queries the current right here from this sensor, determines if we're doing good so far and updates the display and an LED keeps going, test is done, we get a status and we wait for the next push button. Looking at the sketch, I made note that I'm using ESP8266 on a Node MCU, so when this sketch is brought into the Arduino IDE, we would set it up for this board, and we need to make sure we have libraries for this current sensor and the OLED. Then we create objects to interface with the OLED and current monitor, define the GPIO we're going to use, and here's our test parameters. When we're running the motor at low speed, we set the duty cycle at 40%, and we're expecting at least 60 milliamps of current on the motor driver. At high speed, the duty cycle is going to be 65%, and we're looking for at least 100 milliamps for a successful test. And through trial and error, I found a frequency of 800 hertz works fine. In the setup, we configure our GPIO for the buttons and LEDs, initialize the current sensor and the display, and the PWM generator, we just make sure the output is turned off, and we configure it for that 800 Hz frequency, get it ready to go at low speed duty cycle, and then the main loop. What we're really doing in this loop, until a button is pressed to start a test, most of the main loop is skipped in this if statement. We send out a message on the OLED to say push button to start test. Then we do a read of the button, and if it is not pressed, we basically skip down to the end of the loop, because this is the end of that if statement, and we come back and start the loop again. We keep displaying the message on the OLED and checking until it's time to start a test. When we do start the test, we follow these PWM module commands to turn on the output at a certain duty cycle, and we turn it on by sending uppercase ON out on serial 1, because that's the pin we're using on ESP8266, and we use print, not print line. We don't want carriage return line feed or else it won't work. So that was a lot of trial and error trying to figure that out. After we turn on the module, we update the message on the OLED to say we're doing a low speed test and what target current we want to achieve. We let it run for a couple of seconds so the motor gets up to speed, and then I found it's best to take at least 20 readings of the motor current. Since the PWM is turning the motor on and off and on and off, Depending when we measure the current, sometimes it's going to be higher, sometimes it's going to be lower. So this helps smooth it out. And after we've taken a reading and shown it on the display, we check if it's at least the current that we expect. If it's not, we turn on the fail light, update the OLED, and we have set a variable here to say the test failed. If the test failed, we don't go into this if statement, which is for the high speed test because we already failed low speed. So we would end up coming down to this part of the sketch, turn off the PWM, wait a couple seconds so the message on the screen can still be read and we can see that we failed. Then we jump to the start of the loop and prompt the user to start a new test. To show this in action, here's a couple of test executions, pushing the button and letting the whole system run. We'll pull the wire out of the motor to just see what happens when the motor isn't running, so we don't get the amount of current to be able to pass the test. Of course, this is just a simplification of a real test system. This method of measuring the current is inconsistent, partly because of the PWM. 
So in reality, we would probably have some other current monitoring system where we're actually averaging the current, smoothing out the PWM so that we can measure more of a steady state. The motor could be any sort of unit under test and measuring the current is just one thing that we could be testing for. We could also be just testing for serial communication feedback where we have an entire subsystem that we're running a test on and just waiting for some serial pass-fail info to come back or measurement data that we can evaluate. So that's an introduction to functional test systems and how we can put a bunch of these Arduino modules to use. Sometimes we only need one module to do a simple task, but we can get as complicated as we need. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like content like this, consider subscribing for more in the future.